got another question here. I got a Nebraska and states with similar terrain are a great representation of libertarian philosophy in action. You know, you raise a good point there. Um, because out here, when you get out in the West, uh, the Midwest, people live very independently. There's a reason why farmers are so independent because they can tell you, fuck you, get off my farm. It's very powerful. Um, like, I, I don't know how to tell you this, but um, like during the worst of the lockdown, like other than the fact that I couldn't go to a movie theater for about six weeks and some of my favorite restaurants were closed for about a month, life largely didn't change. Uh, like you could still go to the store. You could still go here and there. People still got together. Um, people still had their parties in their barns and their shops. And it was, uh, it, I, you know, let me tell you, I, some of the wildest parties were actually during COVID when I was hosting card games, um, kept it under nine people, but like, no, hardly anybody followed. Like it was just, a. Uh, two worlds like i said like we we're living in two different what's the best way to put this it's kind of like we're watching two different movies on the same screen here in america you've got the people who are very left who are seeing one movie and you got the people who are on the right who are seeing a different movie and this covid thing was a very good representation of it because there was the maskers and the no maskers i don't i don't know how else to put it but like here in nebraska we got back to like People who were wearing masks and all but the biggest cities kind of got like, okay, kind of got the weird look. While in the big cities, people without the mask got the real big stink eye. Uh, Christian says, frontier, wide open spaces, which compels its inhabitants to adopt personal responsibility. Yeah. Also, one time I borrowed a buddy's night vision goggles and I sat out on in my pickup truck, rolled the windows down, waited a good hour, put a piece of tape over the clock in there, put it on, and I saw everything that went bump in the night. And so, yeah, that's why I carry a rifle with me. <laughs> when you find out, like, wow, just beyond the barrier of these lights, we really do not own the night. It's skunks, badgers, badgers, uh, foxes, possums, mice, 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 deer, coyotes. Uh, just about anything you could freaking and just like freaking highway. It's just fucking everywhere. That when you look up to the sky with night vision goggles, you see about like 200% more stars than you're used to. It's fucking crazy. Um, and like, it, it wasn't really so much just the, like any one of those animals I don't really care, but it was just the volume of it. Like I was looking at like several hundred animals just, and what was crazy is, so there was one yard light about, uh, I'd say about eighth of a mile away and so there's this one yard light making a little halo of light and i watched all the animals just go around that light and that was it and so yeah you realize just how much we don't actually own the night out here and so yeah you carry a gun with you and i always kind of joke it's uh it's kind of my joke that i always say it's like i'm always on gravel roads out in the middle of nowhere fucking literally out in the middle of corn country nebraska one of these days i'm gonna pull up on some bigfoot fucking chupacabra shit ain't nobody gonna believe me you christian you're gonna like pat me on the shoulder like yeah phil sure sure you did sure and so no i'm gonna fucking shoot that son of a bitch throw it in the back of my truck drive it down to the sheriff's department say take lots of pictures of this motherfucker so none of you call me crazy <laughs> So yeah, that's a, that's another reason why I carry a rifle. It's a uh, son of a bitch. One of these nights, I'm gonna see some weird fucking thing, and nobody's gonna believe me ever. Uh, Bandit said, "Yes, it's a Rorschach test. Everybody's seeing what they want to see." Wow, what kind of animals did you? Yeah, it, it was pretty crazy. Now, actually, one time I saw a very odd animal um, where it ran out of my machine shed, and it ran faster than anything I'd ever seen in all my life. Like any faster than any deer I'd ever seen run. Like it just, woo! Like wow! I tried to get move because my headlights were pointing right at it. It was night. There was a little rabbit like in front of it, so I like I had clear view of the thing. But its body was strange. Its legs were too long to be a bobcat, but its torso was too short to be a mountain lion. But it fucking ran, and its like face kind of looked smushed down, almost like rat-like, almost and. 
I uh, drew it out at a buddy's uh, shop when we were playing poker one night. Because, uh, you know, we'll just go from shop to shop. Like, poker, or, like, you do it at my house, whatever. And so I drew it out, and I left it there. And his dad, who's actually a trapper, and he actually goes, like, hiking in the mountains of Montana and hunts elk and shit like that. Like, um, he said, like, who the hell drew this? I was like, oh, my buddy Phil drew that last night. He said, what... What, uh, what did he describe? And then he read it and he said, well, once in a while, like if you've ever seen ligers, um, where a tiger and a lion will sometimes interbreed. Now it rarely happens in nature, but it can. But the the uh, offspring is always sterile. Well, apparently cats of different breeds can do the same. Uh, so it's potentially like some sort of, you know, cougar and mountain lion rather than killing each other, got it on. And its offspring is the sterile thing that happened to be hiding out in my shed that night. And so it's one of those things like it's so weird because I described this and like I even had one buddy I'm like, Phil, you're full of shit. And I'm like, fuck you. I'm like, what What do I have to gain from fucking making this up? OK, like, but yeah, sounds like chupacabra to me. Like, no, to me, I think it could be some sort of, a, you know, hybrid creature that really was not meant to be. Or you know, something like that, because the legs were just too long. Like, I don't, but the the head was set down like a cat. And so I, and there was no tail. Uh, that, that was the other weird thing. I had, and so it's one of those odd experiences just out here in Nebraska. I'll never quite forget. Uh, so it's like, hmm. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to have a buddy of mine. He goes by the name online of JKK47. Uh, he's only been on my podcast before just to review some liquors. And uh, he's more than skeptical. He thinks I just saw a bobcat with some shadow. And I'm like, I did not fucking see a bobcat with some shadow. Fuck you. That is not what I saw. I've seen a fucking hundred bobcats, okay? That is not what I fucking saw that night. Um the legs were way too long. It was way too tall. Uh, and at that card game, uh, there's another buddy of mine who's a fur trapper. And he's like, oh, what? There might be some strange one of a kind hybrid creature with a unique fur. No, Phil, I don't want to fucking trap your land more because uh, he really wanted to trap my land. I'm like, nope, nope. Because I, I don't, I'm sorry not, not to speak ill, but he was a Southern boy and he had no problem with using snares. And snares I don't like because a human foot can get in snares too. And so like, you ain't fucking putting up snares on the goddamn land. So, you know, I got nieces, nephews. I got a daughter myself. I, you, you ain't putting no goddamn snares. Um, so that was kind of my hard line there. But yeah, he, when he, the minute he heard about that, the, there was some trappers wanting to trap. But you know, what a lot of folks don't know is a mountain lion can cover 40 miles in a single day. So if you saw a mountain lion that day, doesn't mean he shacked up there. He could be in the next county by lunchtime. So you never know when it comes to wildlife. But yeah, out here, uh, I usually carry some sort of firearm or at least a blade uh, because there's some mean stuff out here. Now, knock on wood, we don't have wild hip hogs. Thank the fucking Lord. Our winters are too cold. They can't fucking handle it. Um, we rarely have mountains very rarely but we have had some fucking uh we had some elk come down the mountains and now we had one moose in my county first time we've ever had a fucking moose ever seen in nebraska like this part of nebraska anyways and it happened to be like eight miles south of one of my fields like there's a fucking moose out here what the fuck uh so that would be wild hogs scare me they're like fucking giant rats. Uh, like uh, I got some kin folk down in Texas and yeah, they're fucking giant, fucking furry, more aggressive, more asshole rats. Like that's basically what they are. And so I would have no problem. Uh, just yeah. Having a big old hog hunt. Uh, mountain lions are cute. Oh, they're beautiful animals. They're beautiful. Uh, will mountain lions kill you? Probably not. <laughs> that's an unfortunate like now if one of them gets a taste for human blood yeah they will if it's a man eater yeah you gotta find it and put it down because it will keep eating people and unfortunately small children are the best opportunity prey so if one gets the taste for human blood 
it's got to go. But usually, no, no. Uh, they will just watch you because it's the old adage of most wildlife. They're more scared of you than you are of it. Um, but I remember one time uh, my dad was uh, bow hunting and he got a doe, but the doe got away from him and he just couldn't fucking like it just he lost sunlight, got away from him. He said, all right, I'll find it in the morning. Um, so he comes back the next morning and he finds a deer up in the tree. Mount lion's the only animal that does that. And it had been partly eaten on and uh, it's probably already well gone. But you got to keep in mind, uh, they know where you are long before you know where it is every time. Like it's just going to have better awareness. The likelihood of you getting the drop on a mountain lion is no, it's not. Even with mountain lion hunting, you usually have to have dogs to help, like, you know, keep them in mind and be aware of where they are. Then they'll try to chase them into a tree. But uh, that's that's uh, something that happens, like, up in Idaho. Like, we don't really do that around here. Um, there was talk of doing a mountain lion season, but then Representative Ernie Chambers pretty much just filibustered it away. So, yeah, it is what it is. But yeah, if there is a man eater, you do got to put it down because it's like any other cat, when it gets a taste for human blood, it's it's a problem. Uh, could someone domesticate a mountain lion? That's a problem. Any wild animal, you have the opportunity to do it. But it's also, you got to keep in mind, it's a wild animal that can turn on you at any minute. If that old wild switch snaps, suddenly... Rah! So it can happen, but there's a reason why like uh, cows and dogs are popular human animals. Like we eat cows and we keep dogs because they're easily trained, highly domesticatable, and they like to be in big groups and humans are social animals. So it works out like, uh, for example, there's a fox den on uh, one of my dad's fields. If I wanted to, I could reach in to the fox den when the mom's not there pull out a pup and could have a baby fox pup as a little dog for about like I don't know for a couple of months anyways because you know it'll act like a little puppy dog for the first few like eight months of its life but then eventually it is a wild animal and it will turn on you uh that's it will nip at you at first and it'll get a little more playful and then uh, so when you take the fox pup you take it with the knowledge that you're gonna have to let it go sooner than any other dog so you don't want to get too attached that and you're being kind of mean pulling a fox away from its natural habitat i've uh, even brought my daughter to like look at them one time and it's like do you want me to bring it eh, no no let's leave it with mom so, uh, yeah, when I go hunting, my daughter has uh, two rules for me for worldwide hunting. Uh, I'm not allowed to hunt any elephant at all because she loves elephants. And those things are fucking pricey. I'm not going to shoot an elephant. And I'm not allowed to shoot anything that might be a mommy. So, you know, hey, that's, that is what it is. So when I go deer hunting, it's always big antlers. Um, which I haven't actually gotten a buck in a couple of years. Cows are cute pets too. Eh, it depends on how you want to find pets. My neighbors used to raise chickens and their chickens full grown would come onto my lawn. My dad actually built a chicken tractor. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, uh, it, it's really something. I, I don't know how else to put that. A chicken tractor. Um, it just smooths itself out. Tell you what I'll do if I ever get back. I promise to refabricate you, raging rivers of gold. That's what the brochure advertised. And now we're lost, we gotta take it down. Let you get them slow. It's hard to survive. Nice. Eldorado. Oh, Lord. Well, let's see how that one went. Yeah.